this is just another example, but with a mechanical system. Okay. And then what I'll do is uh, on Friday I want to start with some of the new material, so I'll probably just upload the uh, uh, one more example, a YouTube video of another example for you guys. So you guys have three examples of this all the way through worked out. And then when you're studying for your exam, that's on Monday. Don't forget is uh, uh, it, it'll uh, it'll help you to do that study and go back to the lectures and. Pick up the work for the homework this. Uh uh, yeah, I'll, I mean, I can do, I'll, I'll put up a quiz. It, I think that's probably a good idea to make sure that everybody does the homework. So, yeah. Uh, okay, good. So let's try another example. This is a higher order system. I'm not going to tell you which order it is, but it's higher order. Um, and up to this point, all we've dealt with is like first and second order systems, right? This is going to be higher order. But it's going to be no problem. It'll just be, you know, a couple more equations and that's it. So, translational mechanical system. So I show it to you, and we got to go all the way from the schematic to the state space model. So guys, stop, stop on the way at the linear graph model, and go from there. So zero, whoa, can't handle that fatness of the marker. It just needs to be a little bit better. Zero, okay. So let's draw a linear graph. That's got to be the first step, right? Linear graph. And we know when we draw a linear graph, the first thing we need to do is draw a coordinate arrow. And since our source is pointed to the right, let's point it to the right. How about that? And we've got ourselves uh, Vs, which is a velocity source. It's a little bit different than we've seen before. Usually with mechanical systems so far, we've only done examples with four sources, but now we're doing with a velocity source. So you can't say, oh, I never saw one with a velocity source. It was unfair for you to put that on the exam. <laughs> Here you are. So, uh, not that that means I'm going to put that on the exam. I, I, I would never make up the exam until the night before, so I can never give away <laughs> anything. <laughs> so, all right, so uh, for mechanical translational system, we always have a ground, right? So that's going to be our first step is to draw in a ground node. And then we write it, draw the other three, well, oops, other nodes. How many other nodes do we have in this system? Three. Okay, let's identify those three. So this is a node, right? Because this has some distinct velocity over here. So we have a node that corresponds to the Vs, then M1 and then M2, right? M1 and then M2. So let's draw in our M1 and our M2. And we know that Vs connects to this first node, right? So let's draw that in. Which direction should we draw the arrow on Vs? away from the node of application because it's an across variable source and it is in the same direction as the coordinate arrow. Okay? Usually cross variable sources are going to go away from the node towards ground and three variable sources are going to go towards the node of application and away from ground unless we ended up with some weird coordinate arrow in opposite direction. Okay, and then all we've got left are the springs and the dampers, right? How do they connect? Yeah, so K1, K1, and B1, right? Which directions should I draw those? Mass one to, the right. to the right, towards mass 1. Excellent. And we have our K2 and our B2. And which direction should I draw those? Same way, towards the right, because that's the direction of our coordinate arrow from Vs to M1 to M2. Okay, so now we've got our other steps, right? Our 1a, what was our 1a? Remember? Tree. Normal tree. Got to draw our normal tree. So uh, which 
elements. Oh, I didn't write VS, did I? So which elements are in our normal tree? So the first thing that we grab are what? Nodes. So let's just pretend that they're all green now. Okay. What do we grab next? Sources, cross variable sources, not through variable sources, across variable sources. This isn't a cross variable source, so we do grab it. But it is important to note that if this was a through variable source, we would not select it. Okay. What about next? What's after cross variable sources? It's not. It's not through variable. It's it's a type energy storage elements, which are our M one and our M two, right? So you guys can like use highlighter or a different color pen or whatever. Yeah, it like web pencil yeah, it doesn't do that. <laughs> uh, some people will will draw like a squiggle alongside to say this is part of the tree. Whatever is fine. And on an exam when I'm grading, I just like say what it you know. This is the normal tree and draw like a squiggle next to it. This is denoting a normal tree. Whatever, however you do it, it's fine as long as it's clear. I don't, I don't care. I don't want to have to. Uh, interpret something that's like super esoteric though. So if you did a thinner line or something like that, like you better say what it is, because then I'm g I, I, I yeah. can't interpret every. Everything. But it would be easier to write uh, across variable equals vs storage elements equal m. You could do that. Uh, so one thing that is I, I think is pretty helpful is if you bring in a highlighter, then you just whoosh, 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 there's your normal tray, and that's pretty easy. Or bring in a red pen or blue pen or purple pen. I like violet pen. Bring in a violet pen. OK. So we did that. So yeah, and, and we, we would then go on to uh, uh, D type and then T type. But we can't take any more elements in. Otherwise, we would create a loop, right? So we know we are done. We took either of these, well, any of these, K1, K2, B1, B2, loop. So we're done. All right, so then what is 1B? Primary and secondary variables. So primary are across variables on branches. So we have VS. VM1, VM2, and then through variables on links. So it's going to be FK1, FK2, <laughs> Go, uh, running out of space. Look what I can do with space. That's cool. Um, and then I can do uh, FB1 and FB2 which mean our secondary variables are fs, fm1, fm2, vk1, vk2, vb1, vb2. And was I going back to the definition there? No, I was just permuting the line and puff. So it's easier. What is C? State variables, right? I think. Yeah. Yeah. State variables. So remember, they're across variables on A types in the normal tree and through variables on T types not in the normal tree. So A types in the normal tree are M1 and M2. Their across variables are VM1 and VM2. Through variables in the links are K1 and K2. So their through, vari uh, through variables, sorry, T types in the links are K1 and K2. Their through variables are FK1 and FK2. So what's the order of our system? Fourth order, number of state variables. Fourth order system. Oh, how did we? How, how can we handle this? This is going to be scary. Think we're going to make it? I assure you, 
that last night I did this and it worked out. Okay. Um, so we got this. D. So state variables, and then we got to do the, the, the vectors, right? Definition of the vectors. So our state vector, x is going to be, we, remember we can choose any order, but let's just use this order because that's the one I used in my notes that I don't have with me. So vm1, vm2, fk1, fk2. State vector. What about our input vector? What are our inputs? Vs. Vs. We didn't have any other sources. I, I didn't do that to you guys too. I could have added like a four source in there, but all right. So we just have Vs. And what about our outputs? I say in the problem to find the states of the with outputs being the spring forces and the mass momenta. So the spring forces are Fk1 and Fk2, right? So F K one, F K two. We denote the momentum usually as lowercase p, so p of mass one, and then p of mass two. The momenta. All right. So I think we're ready now for elemental equations, aren't we? Is that next? Yep. Elemental. So let's draw a column. We've got six passive elements. So let's draw this out. M1, M2, K1, K2. I tend to, I like to put the, the energy storage elements at the top because those are the elemental equations we're going to end up with at the end. And then I list the ones that are not the D types below that. So I then I'll put the, the B1 and the B2. But this is just, you know, my own idiom. It's not something that you have to follow. I just like doing it this way. It helps me keep things straight. Arbitrary rules sometimes are helpful. So we just need to write the elemental equation of each one of these. So D, V, M, 1, D, T. Ooh, you guys want to just use dot notation in this one because it's a, not an electrical system? <gasps> I love it when we can do that. We don't have any I's. Let's do that. So we have, instead of dvm dt, we have vm1 dot. Oh, that's so much easier to write. Equals 1 over m times f, well, m1, right? fm1. So Force on mass one is equal to the mass of mass one times the acceleration of mass one. That's all that equation says. Vm2 dot equals one over m2, fm2. Then the force through spring one, the time derivative of that, is equal to k v k one. This is the one that's weird, right? There's no one over the k. It's just k. Um, and then fk2 dot. That's just like a gotcha that I always get. This is k1, of course, and this is k2. vk2. b1, the force going through each damper, damping element has to be equal to the damping coefficient times the velocity. And FB2 equals B2 times VB2. Whew. A lot of equations, but I mean, it's just listing a bunch of things we know, right? OK. 1F, continuity equation. So I think that I'll, I'll start using this idiom too. So we, we need a continuity equation for each of the passive branches, right? Each of the elements in the normal tree, they're not sources. So we need one for M1 and for M2. So I'm just going to, I'm going to start doing that. So I'll write a table with a column that's branch and then a column that is equation. 
So for branch M1, we need a continuity equation, right? And wow, that's actually a pretty easy one. We can just take this one here. We just need to cut one and only one uh, specific. Oh, that was for M2, wasn't it? For M1, it's that one. And we'll also do this one for M2. I should use a different color. That one's it's kind of hard to see if I don't. So we'll use orange. Bam and bam. Okay. So there. So what we've got is, remember, let's skip to that step where I say, okay, I need to write an equation for FM1, the force through mass 1. It ha it's leaving that contour. Therefore, it has to equal everything going into that contour. Okay? So FM1 has to equal FK1 plus FB1 minus FK2 minus FB2. Okay? So F M1 has to equal F K1 plus F B1 minus F K2 minus F B2. Done. Okay. It's already solved for the variable we want conveniently by the way we constructed that. The other branch that we need a, a continuity equation for is M2. So we're going to write FM2 equals, so it, it's leaving the contour, so it has to equal everything going into the contour. So FM2 has to equal FK2 plus FB2, which are both going in. So FM2 has to equal FK2 plus FB2. OK, is that clear? We're just rolling right along here. So 1G, compatibility. 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 It's a long word. OK, for the compatibility equations, we need one for each link, right? We replace that link into the normal tree for a moment, and we write the loop equation. So I will write link, and then column, and then equation. So our links are k1, k2. Well, actually, I'm going to do k1, b1, and then k2, b2. And you'll see why in a second. So k1, what happens if I stick k1 in there? I see that we create this loop here, right? So VK1 has to equal VS minus VM1, right? So VK1 has to equal VS minus VM1. VB1 connects between the same nodes, so it ends up being like essentially the same equation, right? VB1 equals VS minus VM1. VB1 equals VS minus VM1. K2, if I stick that in to the normal tree for just a moment, then I see that VK2 has to equal VM1 what? Minus VM2, right? So VK2 has to equal VM1 minus Vm2. And similarly, Vb2, which is connecting between the same nodes, is Vm1 minus Vm2. They're the same thing. Whew. OK. Nice. We're at step two, right? And you might think, my god, are we going to really make it through this whole example in this time? Yes. See, fourth order, no problem. 1G, and then we're going to go to 2A. So 2A is to do this substitution with our elemental equations eliminating secondary variables. We need to rewrite this column. So we have our M1, M2, K1, 
K1, K2, B1, B2. All right, so we had V M1 dot equals 1 over M1. Instead of FM1, we're going to substitute in this continuity equation that says F K1 plus F B1 minus F K2 minus F B2. Okay. Now, um, our M2 then is going to be V M2 dot equals 1 over M2 times it would be FM2, but we have a nice continuity equation for that. FK2 plus FB2 is what FM2 is equal to. Nice. Next, FK1 dot is equal to K1 times. It's VK1, but we have a co compatibility equation for that. So VS minus VM1. That's this one. And then we have FK2 dot equals K2 times it's VK2, right? Our VK2 is just VM1 minus VM2 from this expression. Okay, so for B1 and B2, we have F B1 equals B1 times VB1, which we have an expression for, VS minus VM1, and FB2 then very, very similarly is equal to B2 times instead of VB2, so we use this in the last expression, we use VM1 minus VM2, VM1 minus VM2. Two. Whew. Okay. So now to be like for a fourth order system, you never know how it's going to go. But in this case, once again, works out pretty nicely, the algebra. Because if you look at these equations, K1 and K2 equations have VM1, VM2, VS, FK1, FK2. Those are all stator inputs, right? So the K1 and K2 equations are already good to go. We need to eliminate FB1 and FB2 in these, in these first two equations, but notice that B1 and B2, the B1 and B2 equations are already solved for in terms of inputs and state variables. So it's just one substitution and done. So not too shabby. Um, so M1, we're left with M1, M2, K1, K2 equations Woo. and we have so V M1 dot equals so 1 over M1 times so FK1 state variable leave it alone plus so FK1 plus FB1 which is not a state variable but we have this expression for it here it is equal to B Two, sorry, B1. B1 times Vs minus Vm1. Right? Did this go off? No, it's never on. Yeah. It never turned on? No. Oh. I mean, I know you said something in the beginning. I thought it turned on. It's like, it doesn't have power. Well, I guess that power cable hanging from it is probably why. <laughs> All right. So, B1 times Vs minus Vm1. Isn't that so much better? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay. I just looked down at the little thing of me, and it had a black screen behind me. I was like, what? I thought it was good like that. Okay. All right, so let's power through. We're almost there. So B1, Vs minus Vm1. We were right here. So then minus Fk2, state variable, right? Minus Fb2, we have an expression for that. B2, Vm1, minus V. M2. And then there's a closing parenthesis. Okay. Mass 2. Vm2 dot equals 1 over m2. This one's a lot easier. Fk2 state variable plus Fb2, which we have this expression for, plus B2 times Vm1 minus Vm2. And then the K1 and K2 equations don't change. FK1 dot equals K1 Vs minus Vm1 FK2 dot equals K2 times Vm1 minus Vm2. So we are there. We have arrived. Now we just need to write it in standard form. 2C. Standard form tells us that x dot equals, so it's a fourth order system, so it's a 4 by 4 A matrix. A, x, where I like to write out our x to remind us the order we chose. V, M1, V, M2, F, K1, F, K2, plus. The B matrix, which has to be a 4 by, we have one input, so 1 times the input Vs. All right, first equation is the long one. We have to write down the Vm1 coefficient here. So I see a Vm1 here, and I see a Vm there. So we got to combine this. So we have a negative B1 and a negative B2, and then we have a divided by M1. So I see a negative b1 plus b2 divided by m1. Hmm, I think I'm going to have to put it over Get my room, m1. And then I have the vm2 coefficient, which fortunately there's only one, it's plus b2 over m1, b2 over m1. Fk1, I see an, a 1 over m1. Should have given myself more room. Rookie mistake. Yeah, I know, right? And uh, then Fk2, which is a negative 1 over m1. Vs is b1 over m1. So that first equation's got, got a little bit of everything in it. But fortunately, the other three do not. So our second equation says that Vm1 just has a B2 over M2. So B2 over M2 for Vm1. Uh, for Vm2, I get a negative B2 over M2. Negative B2 over M2. And then I get uh, 0 for Fk1, and then Fk2, just a 1 over M2. And there's no Vs in this, so that, that term is 0. OK, the last two are pretty easy. So I get negative K1 Vm1, and then 0 for the rest of these state variables, right? 0, 0, 0, and then I have a K1 Vs. Finally, I have for my Vm1 term in the last equation, I have a K2. And I get a, uh, oh. Yeah, right? Yeah, K2. K2. And then I get a negative K2. And then a 0, and then a 0, and then a 0. And then a zero. Whew. OK. Um, 
Fortunately, two uh, uh, D and E are, you can just go into one step because it's pretty straightforward. So we have uh, four outputs and four states. So we have a four by four C matrix. VM1, VM2, FK1, FK2, plus four by one D matrix, VS. So our our two our, our outputs are the so the first output is FK1, second output is FK2. So zero VM1, zero VM2, one FK1, zero FK2, 0 VS, right? And then the other one, so FK2 is just 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And then the momentum is just mass times the velocity, right? So mass 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then mass 2 times VM2, 0, 0, 0. Okay, we're running a little over, but I think that that is um, going to be helpful for you guys in studying. So, all right. I think I got to get out of here.